first in the Fishtown section of Philadelphia. A lot of folks ask me, like, why Fishtown? Like, what were you thinking? Um, it's literally the only place that said yes. It was the, I, I tried. I knocked on many doors. I had an idea that people thought didn't make a lot of sense. Why would you open a bookshop that um, celebrates women authors, women artists, women activists? At that time, it just didn't seem to people, I guess, um, like a relevant idea. And, you know, of course, that all sounds really silly now uh, in the current moment that we're in. But just a few months ago, it wasn't the current moment that we are in. And people's consciousness was slightly different. Um, opened, we had a really grand reception. I want to say we never sent out a single press release. Like all of this that has happened has really been word of mouth and people just kind of being interested. The woman from Philly Mag said someone told her to stop in and she did. And she kind of sparked things um, initially and very, very graciously uh, wrote a story about what it is that, you know, we were up to at the time. Six weeks later, we're told we need to shut our doors. Harriet's Bookshop. Um, you know, sad face. I'm like, what am I going to do now? Um, I've invested my time, my energy, my resources. Like, this is what I thought I was going to be doing. And um, for folks who might not know, I'm not a huge team. It's me. You know, my son is there working with me sometimes. Um, and then his girlfriend, who's amazing and also supports me as an intern. So, you know, we're a small group. We're a small team. They're, they are both 16 years old. Um, and so, you know, to fast forward to the moment where we're um, preparing for the most recent protest that happened downtown, uh, it was those two young people, similarly, who were uh, going to their first protest. I felt like, you know, things were pretty hot over in Minneapolis. Um, and, you know, we're asking them a lot of questions about like, you know, why are you protesting? What, what are you standing for? What, are you, what is it that you stand against? You know, what do, are you taking a sign? What does your sign say? I mean, and my son gave me so much heat about the fact that I was telling him um, I didn't think it was a good idea to hold up a sign that said, I can't breathe. And he was just like, I don't, you know, you know, you don't know, and you're old. And I'm like, I'm old, you know, <laughs> anyway. Um, and so, you know, it's just what I said to him and it finally resonated with them was that, you know, how we protest is the protest and that we could do, a, you know, there's a million different ways to protest, right? You don't have to do just this one singular thing. We don't have to just march. We don't have to just hold signs up. Not to say that there's anything wrong with those things, but that particular, I was like, you know, we just have, we can do more. And I was like, we have these books. I placed an order because I really felt strongly like it was important that I got the autobiography of Malcolm X and the autobiography of Harriet Tubman out on the streets. And I said, here, let's do, let's try this, see what y'all, you know, see what happens, see if people are interested in the material. If not, you know, we don't have to, but let's just see. Um, and of course, people were very, very like um, excited about getting copies of the, of the resources. We have absolutely no more. Um, and then got donations, which we really weren't even asking for, right? And began to, you know, do more books. So right now we have Emergent Strategy and Parable of the Soul are available for anybody who wants to come pick up a copy from Harriet's Bookshop. That was a long answer. <laughs> no, that was a great answer. And I have so many more questions, but um, I want to also open it up for folks to jump in and ask questions of their own. So um, you can go ahead and uh, unmute yourself if you want to ask Janine a question and maybe just tell us your name as well. So does anyone want to jump in and ask a question about the work that Janine has been doing, or maybe more broadly about um, running a bookshop in this moment, or anything like that. I have a question. Um, so Janine, um, you're, are you having to close your bookshop? Is that what you said at the beginning? You have to move or something? Well, no, what happened is that when COVID, um, the pandemic hit, we were told that we had to shut our doors. Oh. Um, and so that was around March 15th. Uh, and we decided to move the collection, the majority of it online. And what we did most recently and continue to do now is have like what we call sidewalk sales, where basically I take this, I design the sidewalk and make it look like you're in the bookshop. And so it's, you know, like this elaborate sidewalk um, display where you can kind of sit or like hang with the books, et cetera. Oh, okay. So that, that's still happening. Oh, okay, that's good. I thought, yeah, I know that it was the timing. I couldn't believe it when it, you opened in February. And then, you know, I mean, it's just like, 
Yeah, it was. Un- it was. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> you yeah. know. Through. I know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, at the same time, it's the people, right? The people are who have made it possible for us to keep going because mm-hmm. people have supported what it is that we're, we're up to. It wasn't, you know, it, it was either, it was really up to the people. We didn't get the PPP and all of those like big loans from the government, and so it really was about whether people were going to support us or not, and they have, and they continue to. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and how did you um, decide that, like? the particular books you wanted to take out onto the streets and um, how have people responded to, you know, a cool bookseller, bookseller of color, distributing these books for free, as I understand it, or do people Venmo you if they want to, or, yeah. I'm, so we've done it completely for free. So what happened is we had a donor who had hit me up before, um, before George Floyd's unfortunate murder um, and, <laughs> she said, you know, how can I be supportive to you? You know, let me know. And I'm like, I don't know. You know, it's like, I I really don't know. You know, I was like, I was like, maybe, you know, I don't know. I'll get back to you. I contacted her back when things started happening and said, hey, I have this idea. Here's how you could be supportive. Um, And I just chose two books that were pivotal, pivotal in my development as an organizer and my development as somebody who, um, and, and how I see the world. And that's, of course, Harriet Tubman's um, book, which, you know, this was, this is her story of the 1800s. And unfortunately, it resonates completely with the moment, right? Like, there's so many things that were happening to her and with her during that time, that just, you know, is th- that are still happening. Like, what are we talking about? And then the same thing with Malcolm X, which, you know, again, right, was ni- this 1960s. Why is what was happening in the 1960s so parallel, so um, almost the exact same as what, what we're talking about and dealing with in, in 2020? Um, at the same time, I felt like these two um, ancestors had laid a lot of blueprint for what it is we needed to be thinking about and looking at and some of the strategic moves. Harriet Tubman was so strategic. And for for folks who don't know, you know, she never she never learned how to read or write. And so to navigate the world the way she did without that particular skill set is just beyond genius, right? Like she had this all of these like different ways in which she would show people photos and like use the photos to understand um, whether that person was someone she could trust with more information, right? And so she had like all of these, Harriet Tubman would dress up as a man. She, you know, she, she had all of these different careers. She was a, you know, a spy, a nurse. Um, some people call her a conjure woman. She was very good with herbs, right? And so like there's these, there's, there are these pivotal people um, who have been, they've been so vital to me and uh how i look at the world and so i just felt like those were those were perfect people to share with with others absolutely that makes so much sense i did not know that about harriet tubman and describing that strategic yeah that that's really so strategic so strategic that's exciting i don't know people know that she was a you know um lorene carey who's now one of my mentors did a play recently about Harriet Tubman that opened at the same time that we opened opened Harriet's bookshop. It was, you know, divine timing, I keep saying. And that play was called My General Tubman. It was about Harriet's time as a general in the United States. Well, what now is the United States Army, right? And so a lot of people don't know that she served as a general, that she was the first Black woman to ever do so, that she never got her freaking pension um, and fought for it until her 90s for the time that that she, she, she served our country. Um, and so just like people like her, who I'm just like, she is, at a, she's an icon, right? She has shown us a lot of ways to do exactly what it is that we, we say we want to do right now. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I'm going to drop just again, information for Harriet's in the chat if, for people that are just joining us. Okay. And then, um, for folks, does anyone else have something they'd like to ask Janine or comment on all the labor she's been doing in the past couple of weeks, um, or perhaps again more broadly about um, the namesake or Harriet Tubman or um, being a bookstore, a bookstore owner in this moment. Otherwise, I'll keep. <laughs> I have a question. Hi, I'm Deborah Turner, a uh, writer, and thank you for a recent message um, when you respond to my email. Oh. Um, I just wonder how Harriet is. Uh, interacting with other bookstores locally or nationally. I mean, there's a big independent bookstore movement, and I, I just curious. I mean, of course, you know, 
you're in the toddler stage, but I just wonder where you're going to go with that. Yeah, newborn, newborn even, right? Like I'm four months old. Um, yeah, so when we first opened up, there is a community here in Philadelphia that reached out and just really wrapped their arms around me, um, a, like a network of independent bookstores and everybody sent love and, you know, lots of support and many people came to the opening. Um, and have continued, you know, there's a lot of emails flying around with that community that I'm not so great at keeping up with. Um, and then uh, just a day ago, uh, somebody reached out and was like, Janine, here are some networks that you might want to consider being a part of just so you aren't um, a team of one in that way anymore. And that you're kind of thinking of some of the resources that are available to you by being a part of the um, I think it's the American Independent Bookstore and I A I B I A B C D A B C whatever I don't know it's a bunch of letters. <laughs> That's awesome to hear that you feel that the community wrapped um, arms around you. That's a hundred percent. I call I call all the bookstores our cousins. We're all bookstore cousins. <laughs> Fantastic. And there is, um, uh, as I understand it, the, a new bookstore in West Philly, too, that's collectively owned, that's uh, Making Worlds Bookstore, right? And mm -hmm. I know they've been um, doing some stuff during this time, too. Mm -hmm. but, uh, any other questions or comments from um, those of you that are here? It's so awesome to see we have like 20, 21 folks here now. Um, yeah, feel free to just unmute yourself and ask a question if you'd like, or type it in the chat. I have another question. <laughs> sure. Um, I didn't realize you were a writer. And I just wonder what genre you're writing in or what project you might be working on. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So Karen, who's on here, is in one of my writing groups. Um, and I, I'm, I'm a terrible writer. No, <laughs> no um, yeah, I don't, I, I'm not clear exactly where my genre lies yet. I think that it's, it feels like... Um, it feels like, Karen, help me. What do you think it feels like? Somebody has told me it's, it feels like dark parable, right? And so that's that's some a place that people have put it in. I don't know, what do you think, Karen? Well, some of your stories, I th you know, they've been kind of like short stories, right? The ones you've written that I've seen. Um, and one seemed like sort of coming of age, kind of a, you know, personal journey type story. Mm. Um, overcoming and dealing with um, significant challenges and things like that. I don't know. It's I always have a tough time with genre myself because I, I hate the the book genres that you have to. I struggle with it. Yeah, it's just because you know. I mean, you could say it's literary, but of course, then literary is such a broad sweep. Yeah, I mean, they tell they tell me it's literary, and I don't know exactly what that even means. And so I'm like, it's also. I mean, commercial, it makes it more, has more of a plot and things. I think those stories do have more of a plot. So, I don't know. I, not a great answer. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. What even is genre? It's just like capitalism making our book our <laughs> into objects, right? But, yeah, uh, yeah well, Amy, do you have a question? It's where, to, it's where to shelve it on the bookshelf at the bookstore. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, depending on what kind of bookstore you have. Right? Exactly. Right? <laughs> But I mean, so Conversations with Harriet is my book that is currently out, and it's a, a it's a series of short stories. Um, I say that they are a con literally. This came way before Harriet's Bookshop, um, and grounds the work that I ended up doing. Um, but you know, it reads as though I am having a conversation with her, and those are the stories that I'm sharing with her, uh, so so I could get her support and feedback. Um, so that's what I want to know is I didn't get to go to your bookstore before COVID set in. I had it on my calendar and just didn't make it up to Fishtown. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, you know, the interior of your bookstore? How do you shelf books? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it's really minimalist. Um, and for me, it was about highlighting like having a highly curated collection and not so much about like quantity, quantity, quantity. And like, that's just a Janine thing. It's just like, I get really like overwhelmed by lots and lots and lots of anything. And so it's very, very minimalist. Um, a lot of people have said that it feels like you're at like an auntie's house. It's, it, it, it feels very home, homely. 
um uh yeah so it's it, it kind of has that vibe i felt like it to me i wanted it to be a place that felt really inviting and that you can kind of almost feel like you wanted to kick your your shoes off even though it's like this is not this is a bookstore i can't take my <laughs> <laughs> and people have actually done it you know when we were when we were still uh open like i was like yeah it does feel like that right i know yeah <laughs> <I> <laughs> candles know. are burning and incense is burning it has like a real like you know, it, it did at least had a had a have a really like um, chill type sanctuary vibe. Wonderful. And how, are you guys doing events this? Uh, you know, in this moment as well. I think I saw you had a couple of um, conversations and and a Kylie Reed uh, appearance or book club or yeah. Yeah, Kylie Reed um, has been. I, I I keep telling everybody and I and Kylie especially like I don't even know if the bookstore would have made it through that first month without her book like so many people have purchased that book you know that book and I don't know if anybody on here has read such a fun age I encourage you to read it uh Kylie's from Fishtown she's now in the New York Times bestselling list a black woman who just you know she she this is her very first book um and it is phenomenal and I think very relevant right the whole book is based on this at this um, in, like sparks from an incident uh, with a security guard or, or a police officer, I believe, right? And so you're kind of like in this in this world that's super even more relevant than it was even just a month or two ago. Um, and then you know it has this beautiful cover, and people are like, "Oh, it looks like you know a cotton candy read." You know, it's like, and in reality, it has many many layers. I I like the book a lot. Um, I, what was the question? Well, are you guys doing any of your events? <laughs> no yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. So, so Britt Bennett, we're supposed to do an event with Britt Bennett any day now. I my I got to look at the calendar so I know exactly what date it is. But she just finished the um, Vanishing Half, and we're excited to, you know, help her um, push that book. That's her second book. That's awesome. And that's, it should be, it's sometime this month. So you'll, if you guys are following us on Instagram or whatever, you'll see it there. Are there questions or things that folks would love to hear more about from Janine or about Harriet's? I'll ask a quick question. So um, I guess for those of us who uh, can't afford to drop a whole lot of money on books, is there a good way to, what would you recommend to support your bookstore and independent bookstores in general if we can't really do much in that area? Yeah, I mean, if you can't drop a lot of money on books, what I would definitely say is that you know, we are now, we have like oh, what I'm calling like like a book bank a little bit where you could actually come down to Harriet's and grab a book um, for absolute free. Uh, and the books that are now for free are, again, curated, right? Books that I um, think are vital to the moment and will spark excellent conversation. And I'd say, you know, save your coinage until you, you know, right. until you mm -hmm. can spend. And I would say continue but continue reading right continue oh, having the dialogue um and you know that's been super supportive to us people have shot us literally a dollar on venmo just to say you know this is what i have and that's huge to us because if somebody is really struggling and you send me you know you're you send me five dollars that's huge right and mm -hmm. that five dollars genuinely goes towards making sure that more folks can get access to the to the information Okay, thank you. Yeah. Maya, did you have a question? I did. Um, I am really happy that I was able to visit Harriet's before COVID. I went with yeah. my parents. Uh, my dad was very adamant about going, which was really exciting. And I think he's very much a, stalwart is not the right word, but just very much like a, a John Grisham, Walter Mosley type man who like doesn't really read as much, like I think Black women's fiction and like just even theory and writing and that sort of thing. And I think that really opened his eyes. So I was curious about the process of, maybe this question has already been asked, but I was curious about the process of picking books and like the, like what considerations do you take in place in terms of like maybe a generational divide or even like a divide between more like, like stereotypically masculine, feminine books and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. He like bought Queenie and really liked it. <laughs> yeah, good for him. Yeah. So it's really a deeply personal experience. I'll give you a short story and then I'll jump right back into your question if I could remember it. But 
So um, I was on, and I won't put them on blast, but I was being interviewed by one of the local um, news stations. And the woman was like, you know, I need you to send me a list of five books that we can give to people and like we can announce on the news and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, okay, but you know, five books is, I have a bookshop, right? And I so five books is a really like small amount of books. And I'm like trying to understand exactly what that, what the goal of those five books become. And I was trying to help her to understand that like as a, as a, educator as somebody who's sharing information with people how important those five books become if I'm sharing them on the news right and she's like I mean just send me the five books and I'm just like I'm working on it you know like you're not gonna rush my process just so that you have something to put on the screen um because it really is important to me that the that I am speaking from a place of um you know, it's just to me, it feels like a huge responsibility. And so originally when we were getting started, the idea was that every month we'd adjust the collection slightly and that I'd work with a different um, woman artist who her and I would collaborate on what the collection was for the month, right? Based on like her art, based on, you know, some of the things that come up in her work. And so, you know, you'll see from that first month like some of the work that we did in March, in February changed in March because we started working with a different artist. Um, and so that to me was originally kind of how it was supposed to be done. It was supposed to be deeply collaborative and a, and a look in and almost like a playlist, the look inside of the, the conversation between these two women um, and the books that were, you know, inspiring us and calling our names at that moment. Um, in addition, folks in the community like you all call me and say, hey, I really want this book. And I say, why? <laughs> and then they say, you know, for whatever reason. Um, and then that dialogue begins and that, and that book also may likely become a part of the collection for the month because it does feel like organic, like a, to me again, a conversation is happening between us and our books becoming part of that bigger conversation. Yeah, I'm so, you know, tell your dad, thank you so much for making his way over and for purchasing a book and for being supportive. It's, it means a lot. It was a really great experience as a family. Yeah, really thank you. Yeah. That's awesome, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Are, are you gonna continue with that? It seems Oops. really visionary and ambitious even. Oh, oh talk about ambition. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was telling my friends, like, you know, I'm always getting told, like, oh, you're over ambitious. And I'm like, what is, what the heck does that mean? But, um, <laughs> yes, I plan to continue with it. The artist that we were planning to work with in April, I just contacted her about figuring out how we can pick up where we left off. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, I think it, it, it's, you know, again, I think the so we celebrating women authors, women artists, women activists, I want to stay as close to that mission as I can, because that mission is what resonates. A question coming um, in the chat about bookshop.org, if that's something that you are into, or if you have a relationship with them, or... If I, anybody I, wants to help me do it, I, I tried, I got on there, I'm not, I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then I just was like, okay, on to the next thing that I got to get done, because I couldn't figure out how to, whatever it was asking me for. So if anybody wants to help, I'm down for the support, for sure. Some, many people have told me I need to get on there, but I just was like, I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, fair enough. For, I mean, I think many folks maybe know, but for, if you don't, it's just like a large conglomerate um, website, like the first real independent um, entity to compete with Amazon. So it has, uh, you know, just an enormous selection and you can get it shipped to your door and then the proceeds benefit independent bookstores. So. Oh. Um, but yeah, Janine knows that for sure. But it, right, if anyone is, is rearing to go with um, setting up, <laughs> um, get in touch directly, yeah. I guess. Um, Team of one so far, you know? And I mean, like, uh, it, I definitely need the support. So if anybody has um, that skill set and doesn't mind, I'm down. And the other questions or um, feedback or uh, wisdom that they wish to ask Janine for? And just know, I thought that I was going to be sitting in the bookshop. It was going to be my writing studio. It was going to be quiet. <laughs> that, you know, no one, I thought, you know, it would be months before anybody ever came in to even check us out. So it's funny. It hasn't happened that way yet. <laughs> I 
I have a question. Yeah. Um, Janine, when do you think you'll be able to uh, reopen in this, you know, new normal? Have you, I mean, I guess we have to wait till we get into the green phase. Yeah, we we have to wait until we're um, in the green phase. And also, you know, I'm I am. My mother is here. She came to uh, Philly from Trinidad like two days before um, things started shutting down, and has and then her the borders of her country shut down. And so she's here um, and also immunocompromised. And so I've had, I've been very like, oh, you know, about how to navigate that too. And that that's a whole other conversation, right? It's just like, you know, I have to be an extra layer, of, in my opinion, an extra layer of careful because I don't want to bring something home to her. Um, and so I've also been just trying to gauge the world and it's, it's a, in the, the new normal, I don't know, has, if we've landed at that yet. I don't, I don't think we have. Um, it's just been so much of this. Uh, and so sidewalk sale is popping. Like, I don't know if you, you know, if you're closer in Fishtown at all and walk down there, it's been pretty busy. Um, my son is actually right there right now with the, with the sidewalk sale going and people can do it all completely contactless. So if they are also, um, immunocompromised or anything like that they don't have to con like you know contact anybody at all it's all just kind of done on its own grab and go so that's been good um and then I don't know I don't know what the next phase looks like totally yet right the bookshop is only a few hundred square feet it's really tiny and so um we can't really accommodate a big crowd um and and we can't we don't have like the barriers and I, I don't I, I don't want to do that either you know I don't want to turn the bookshop into something that it's not just so that we can like open real quick right and so I'm not going to put up those plastic things because it just it, it it doesn't fit with what what, what we're doing. Makes sense. I guess I'm wondering, and I don't know if other folks are too, just about um, what you know, what made you want to open up specifically like a bookstore rather than, I don't know, any other kind of ways of participating in literary community or in activism? Like, um, has been has a bookstore business been like a dream of yours for a long time? Or what made you want to go that direction? Yeah, um, it has something, it's been something that's been, I tell people a lot of time that Harriet whispers um, to me from time to time. And then in recent months, she started like doing more than whispering. She was yelling and and banging <laughs> and like making her presence known and just I, I mean that's how I at least see it because that feeling that was in the bottom of my gut just kept rising and rising and rising to the point where it was like just do this thing that's that you you know that you say you want to do I think that a lot of us have that where we're like oh I want to do this thing and they and it's been calling our names for however long and we keep avoiding it or you know things keep coming up to stop us and get in our way and at some point it's like just either just do it or don't talk about it anymore. And one of my, and my, my sister was just like, you know, you're not, she was like, you know, you're just not serious. You don't really want it. And I, I don't know, that resonated with me when she said it that way. And I was like, I do really want it. And she was like, well, then you do something about it. You know, stop complaining. That's really good to hear, especially right now. And I wonder too, you know, you can be like, I don't wish to talk about this if you don't want to, it's just completely fine. But I, one of my personal like, shakes tiny fist is just talking more about money in the literary community and um, talking about how much things cost and how to go about it. So do you have any, like, uh, how is Harriet's uh, funded and do you have any wisdom for people that have dreams that seem financially really hard? Yeah, I mean, so this is the part where I'm like, why did I do it this, to do this this way? And I'm, you know, I, so the only business understanding I have and I'm, is like, Nipsey Hussle. I don't know if you all know who Nipsey Hussle is, right? Like, that's who is like my business mentor. And I see somebody laughing because they must really know who Nipsey Hussle is. And, um, you know, just recognizing that I don't know a whole lot about business and that I have a lot to learn, um, even though it's just been something that, you know, I, that's a dream of mine. I used to have a book stand. I don't know if a lot of people know that. I used to have a book stand on Broad and Cecil B. Moore where like I sold books and incense and soap outside, um, you know, so it's just been something that I've always really thought was important. When I was at UArts, I had a, a book table that, you know, I used to fund my club because they wouldn't give my club funding. So we 
we sold books and that's how we funded our club. And so it's just been something that's just been a part of my life for a lot, for a long time. It makes a lot, it made like even my sister was like, you know, it makes a lot of sense what it is that you keep saying you want to do because you've been doing it in like various ways. Um, throughout time um, and not 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 great right like I haven't always been great at it and still don't know very much right and so and the lady from MSNBC came and she was like you know you're you know you're a strong activist not great at business because I'm like out there like you know trying to give people books and stuff and she's like you know are you, what do you mean give books away and I'm like you know people want to read I'm not going to tell them no <laughs> you know I can't do that either um, and so I, I, I'm learning as I fly, I guess. Um, at the same time, I think that, you know, and just with everything that just happened with um, George Floyd and the uprisings, uh, I think that a lot of people noticed that they had a huge amount of ignorance around some of these issues and rushed to go purchase books. And some people rushed to go purchase books because they, that made them feel better and made them feel like they were making a step. Some people genuinely um, recognized their own ignorance. Some people, you know, recognized that they needed to go back and relook at some of the things they already looked at. Uh, I, you know, some of those things, books that, you know, are now impossible to get your hands on, White Fragility, Me and White Supremacy, How to Be Anti-Racist, those books sat on our shelves, right? Like they weren't the pop in this books, you know, when we first opened a few weeks ago. And so there has been a dramatic shift in the way that people are um, navigating the world, I'd say. And I think that I, I think that books and protests go hand in hand. This guy came, um, Brother Muhammad came to the bookshop a few weeks ago and was telling me about the long history of women, black women owned bookshops and was saying that he was thinking about writing a, a, a book about it and just about the ways in which it's been used for protest, you know, throughout history. And so it's not, it's not anything new. Uh, and to me, it's the, the you know, it's, it sounds cliche as knowledge is power and it's, the, it's just the ultimate tool, right? No one can take it out your brain once it's in there. Um, and now, you know, you got all of this, like you, you're building up your toolkit. That's amazing that to hear that, you know, some of those books sat on the shelves and now, right, indeed, um, absolutely impossible. And I'm wondering too, and then please, you know, wave your hand or type in the chat if other folks want to ask, um, are there other titles or uh, writers that you're really excited about right now, um, whether they're writing books about uh, past uprisings, organizing racial justice, or just any books that you're just super excited about that are in the shop. Yeah, yeah. I was just telling my mom, I'm really excited about the autobiography of Fannie Lou Hamer that's coming in. That's the next um, group of books that I'm going to be distributing out on the street. I think that a lot of people, you know, whether you studied these people or not in the past, right, it, they, their, their words and messaging tactics and strategies are very relevant for the moment. And to revisit them and have them live presently with us means a lot to me. I have been just in the autobiography bag right now. So that's just where I'm at with it personally. Um, at the same time, I am also in MFA program. So I have to read stuff that even if I don't want to read it and that is so hard for me, um, <laughs> that's out of my comfort zone big time. Um, and so I'm also having to navigate that reading um, stuff that I'm just like, I want to read this, you know? Um, what else, what else, what else? Like I, I just, I really have a lot of appreciation for The Vanishing Half. Um, I, the Conjure Women, oh my goodness, if you have not read The Conjure Women, uh, that, that author came and did an event with us as well. Afia Atakora, it's her first book. And I have a whole thing about people in their first books, cause that's just where I am, right? Like as a, as a writer, I have so much empathy for what that means to be ha releasing your first book in the middle of COVID, right? It's just like, uh, how could this happen? Um, and Afia Takora is so freaking great. She's so good. She's so good. And her story resonated with me in so many ways. And I ended up like, you know, sharing it with a whole bunch of other people. And, you know, she came and um, we did an event together and she, she, she gave me all of this insight. If you read, if you count how many flowers she references in this book, I mean, she's just like so good, you know? And so I, I'm excited about the fact that we have folks that are still willing to do this hard, hard thing in the middle of a hard, hard time. 
It's really exciting. Thank you for that recommendation. Is Are there books that anyone here is um, really engaged with right now, whether they be about their current moment or other recommendations that you want to add into this conversation? The End of Policing. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. Oh, it's free. That's exciting. Okay. Nice. I think it's still free as like an ebook situation and like a PDF too to send around to people. Nice. Clap on you land by Elizabeth Acevedo. Yeah. Thanks, Elena. Yeah. A lot of people that's that's been very popular too. Awesome. Yeah, it was like, I was actually, I was going to get it from the store and that day that I went to the website was when it was like, hey, we're not taking orders from <laughs> Venmo. So I was like, screw it, I'm just going to do the Venmo. <laughs> yeah. I have it if, at the bookshop if you want to, it's on a sidewalk sale. So. Oh, it is? Yeah. What What's the time frame for the sidewalk sale? Because I may uh, make that It's right at 12 and then it's like until we basically don't have any more books. And so okay. we've been out there probably until about five or six. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing Is God Is by Alicia Harris. Thanks, Hannah. That sounds exciting. A play. I heard of that. Oh, yeah. I can suggest something, a book that I bought. Um, I had seen, this is um, one Never Caught. Um, mm -hmm. It's by Erica Armstrong Dunbar. She was actually at the Philly Free Library yeah. years ago, and I really wanted to get the book, and I hadn't. And then I was looking at Janine's um, you know, website and she had different books in stock. And so I was going through it and I thought, ah, oh, this is the book I, I've been wanting to read so badly. And so I got this one and I got another one. I ha and well, this one, um, and I suggested it. Uh, I joined a, a virtual book club, a Philly meetup, and they were asking, and I'd only been to one meeting, and then they were asking for suggestions. And I'm like, well, I have a couple. It's, it was this one and another one, and I'm trying to find it. But mm -hmm. um, they voted on my book, they, they did a vote, and everybody picked this book. And then we did, and this was way before, um, well, this was during Corona, of course, but, you know, way before um, poor George Floyd was murdered. So, you know, the whole, then, then, you know, and, and it was weird because um, I was reading this and, um, you know, and, and then just thinking about what, it, you know, this is about George Washington's slave, Ona Judd, who he tracks down. And so it's a true story. It's nonfiction. Um, and, and anyway, so we're reading. Erica, Erica Armstrong Dunbar is actually local to Philly by the way, I don't know if people know about that and know that she's here. And she also wrote, She Came to Slay, which is about Harriet Tubman. So she came to the opening, she signed books. She, oh. phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, she's like a phenomenal human being and a phenomenal writer. Yeah, everybody loved this book and so many people, there were, I think there was about 20 of us on the call. Um, nobody had, you know, were aware of this or had read about this. And she had explained in the library that, you know, she was just doing some research. She's a historian and came across a little ad of George Washington trying to track down Ona Judd. I actually think I'm gonna to suggest to Kenny, Mayor Kenny, that we need some statues and we could use some strong women. Mm -hmm. And one, cause she was actually helped, her escape was helped by Philadelphia free slaves back in, this is, you know, after, well, after the Revolutionary War, but, you know, still in the 1700s, way before the Civil War. So this is definitely one I would highly recommend. Just thought because you mentioned statues, I was they like, just told me I can reopen the online bookshop right before I got on with you all. So it's not open yet, but it should be open at least by tomorrow. So I'm so happy about that. I was super nervous. I just want to make sure people got their stuff. You know, I didn't want people to be looking at me like, "What are you doing?" Um, but it was like we just woke up, and I don't know if people like we had we we went to sleep with five thousand Instagram followers and woke up with like twenty eight thousand, and so it was just like, <laughs> "What do we do with this?" You know. And it's like the emails and the messages, the texts, and it's like, woo, different, different. Well, I think that was like definitely my, one of my questions too, is we had arranged for you to um, be on Wednesdays on the Stoop like a, a bit ago, and then everything happened and you were so, you know, visible all of a sudden at a national scale. Mm -hmm. And I wondered like, what do you want to do from here? I suppose, like if, mm -hmm. if you had all of uh, us to support you and money was no object, like what would you do with Harriet's? Yeah, I mean, so I've been sharing this and I'm gonna continue is that, um, so I think that there needs to be an IDA's, right? So an IDA's bookshop, I think there needs to be, 
you know, we need to, we get to have monuments uh, as bookshops. What's, why not, right? And I keep telling people, why can't we put up our own monuments? Why do we wait for the state to tell us who we should be celebrating and how that should, what that should look like? And so Ida B. Wells is definitely going to get a, a monument up and out of this thing if I can, if I have anything to say about it. Um, you know, Betty Shabazz, I think there's so many women that I, one, did not learn about in school or anywhere. I had to, that knowledge was, and I keep saying this to people too, like that, that knowledge was about my own self-emancipation. It wasn't, there was nobody who was just like, you know, here's your, here's your reading list. You know what I mean? And like, not to, not to be, not to be, you know, patronizing to people, but it's just like, yo, that there's nothing like going on that journey on your own. And that journey is a forever journey, right? Like I keep trying to help folks to navigate the fact that like, you're not going to Re, there's not going to be five titles that are going to get you the keys to racism and now you have it and you're and it's undone right like that's just not how this this journey uh works and it's just not that it's not that linear and not that simple um and so just thinking about i really want to do more bookshops i think that i need to do um and, I, and, and more women especially need to do more institution building I think that we know that the, there's problems with institutional racism that lives inside of all of a lot of these, um, you know, organizations and businesses and whatever. And it's just like, okay, then guess who gets to guess who gets to have their to do it differently and do it, you know, with your own morals, right? When we open the bookshop, we we open with libations and we did uh, we had I don't know if any of you were were there. We had a huge community circle where we called on the ancestors and we give, we gave things. And I'm like, yo, we can do business. We can define what business is and redefine and, and do it our, do it our own damn way, as opposed to kind of continuously doing something that we know we, that doesn't work for us. Right. Like, and so that's, that's the direction I'm moving in is just to make sure that one, I keep doing this one. Cause I, I'm only four months old and I'm already like, you know, talking about another one. And I'm like, I just, you know, I just calling my name, but I also have to like, Fin keep doing this in the one that I have in integrity, you know. Oh, and we have the basement at the at Harriet's that I've been wanting to redesign and turn into the underground. I want a place where people can, um, and this was before all of this, but it it's more relevant than ever before, where people can do um, organizing training. I keep telling folks that organizing is not something you're just born knowing how to do. You don't wake up in the morning like, oh, I'm an organizer, I got it right. Like that's a skill set, and it's a skill set that. Um, ha that has a lot of research that's already been done. And so we don't have to reinvent the wheel on some of these things, but I do want to get my, my, my young girls um, trained up in how to do it and how to do it well. That was like the best thing I've heard all week for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, I probably be calling on some of y'all like, you know, we got, we got organizing skills boot camp. So who wants to make sure they, they the lessons get taught because I can't teach them. <laughs> I guess like how, you know, how can we support you or how can we help or how can we give you money? Um, how, what do you need from um, Philly community members right now? If I need folks to come down, get those, the books that are free and help us distribute them, help us get them into the hands of people who want to read. Um, you know, I think that there, there's nothing, it's a really like, uh, it's, it's deep, right? When somebody gives you a book, you know, it's like this like per really personal experience. And so I'm hoping that folks will come get a few of the copies that we have and help us distribute, help us move books around the city, especially the people who we know will read them, you know, not to sit on your shelf, not to look cute, but to really actually dig in, right? It's one thing to buy the book, a different thing to read the book, a whole different thing to like analyze the book, discuss the book, you know, and then like I keep pushing everybody on and then to write something uh, based on what it is that you you come out of it with. Um, in addition to like educating and like doing our own research and work to like become organizers, um, is there like a key thing that you've taken away from organizing? Mm -hmm. Like a key thing that can be passed down to community yeah. members? Yeah, I, and I some people were offended by what I wrote on my um, Facebook today, but I will share it again here. Uh, one of the key reasons that the Underground Railroad was really effective was that it wasn't something that it was, it stayed under the radar, right? Many people had no idea that it was happening and it was moving and things were coordinating and it was very succinct, but it wasn't something that was like, oh, look at us, we're, you know, look at my selfie on the Underground Railroad, you know what I mean? Like, that's not it. And so 
thinking about kind of, you know, and not to deny anyone else's experience from protesting in a very like overt way, but also thinking about what your, what your covert methods are, right? And like thinking about what, what you're not sharing with the internet and what you're not sharing with, the, with as many people as possible, what you're actually just doing, you know, here, what strategies you're coming up with here and actually implementing those strategies with people um, that you, you can trust as opposed to everything happening on the, in, this, in this digital realm. I think that, you know, it's just something that um, about it, if you're really, really organizing and being strategic, you, you don't want your opposition to know your every move, do you, you know? So something to think about. I, I read about a bookstore in DC that's um, early during the pandemic started um, accepting donations or fees for people to go into the bookstore alone, mm -hmm. which I think for a lot of readers would be dreamy, but I think it would be a real service for some people like um, because they live alone and they're working at home and they, you know, even sometimes it's too crowded to go out on the street, like especially in denser part of the cities. Um, and I, I, it's a suggestion, you know, take it or leave it. But I've joked and said I'm going to open the bookshop by appointment only. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, I've, joked, just, I've joked about it. I'm not exactly sure yet where we, we land. Um, yeah. I definitely joked about it. And then I also always joked when it was, even when it was open, was like, you know, we're going to do a silent hour in the beginning <laughs> because, you know, sometimes people come in with their like, excited energy and I'm in there chilling. I'm like, no, this is your moment. <laughs> you know? uh -huh. yeah, so it's just yeah. funny. I, I mean, but I don't, I'm not exactly sure yet. Yeah. I mean, I, I, think like, it, I like the idea a lot. Yeah. It seems like tension because you are so um, down for community and uh, yet oh, yeah. your, your vision for the bookstore and how it's curated and changing, how it changes from month to month. Um, it seems like something people would really enjoy and even doing on a you know, repeat basis. Like yeah. uh, coming again this month and see what it's like now. I think people yeah. would really get a lot out of it. Yeah. And that was the idea behind it was that, I mean, the other thing, I don't know who lives in Fishtown that's on here, but the book sh the bookshop literally looks like a different bookshop every time you come. And that has something to do with like my like, nerves <laughs> um, and me like, get, like just redesigning it actually like makes me feel calmer. Um, but, and then it's just exciting. It's exciting that I can make it a new space for, for people every time they, they walk by. So like we've done wild things in the windows, you know, I, my desk was in the window for a while so I could see everybody as they went by. There was a couch, there's a couch in the window right now. So you're kind of like on display while you're, you know, walking. It's like a whole thing. So I get in, I, part the bookshop is, you know, a creative outlet for me in a lot of ways, you know me thanks yeah no i love the idea too i mean a lot of people would probably be really irritated with me if i said the bookshop was by appointment only <laughs> yeah you might wanna, i know that um uh, christina schneider she runs um a novel idea in south philly I, I think they just started doing that since philly like moved into the yellow phase oh no nice. um, yeah so that might be worth like hitting her up she's super cool yeah. my bookshop cousin <laughs> yeah she's wonderful <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'll ask her if she thinks. I know people are going to be looking. They're going to be irritated for sure. <laughs> if I find the article where I read it, I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, is, it, is it mahogany? Uh, I, just, I don't remember. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, send it to me. I feel like we we've communic we communicate outside of this before, right? Deborah? Sorry, I can't mute fast enough. Yeah. Yes, right? yeah, we have. We exchanged yeah. a couple of emails. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Any other um, questions or uh, like things that people want to offer in this last little bit of time together? Yeah, I would say also if you can get on the mailing list because you know that's where we'll be like sending out some of the direct actions um, that we're hoping for folks to support us with or join us on or you know galvanize around. Um, it'll be our own little kind of um, outlet. To, to share and then a whole bunch of people have been doing this really cute thing where they leave um uh bins of bottled water in front of the bookshop 
is that so sweet? Like, is that, is that not the sweetest thing in the world? Where it's like, when, so when we get to the bookshop, my son's always like texting me like, more people left water. And so if anybody ever wants to leave water, all I do is redistribute it, you know, back out to the people. But it's, you know, it's help, it's helpful, it's healthy, it's, it's hot. That's awesome. Okay, so folks can leave water, and if they come to the <laughs> so it's like, what? The bookshop is asking us to leave water, <laughs> but I'm like, you know. <laughs> no, I, lo- I mean, I love that about what you're doing. Is like, it's useful. It makes sense. Um, yeah. If people come to the bookstore and want to help redistribute books, do they just go up to? It's just open on the street and just mm-hmm. grab them. Okay. Yeah, they're right there. My son's in there. I'm in there, or um, Rihanna, his girlfriend's in there, uh, and we all, you know, we have a box that that's waiting to be shared you know you just tell us if you want one you want two you want five you know that's really up to you I was thinking um first thank you for doing this um it's my honor this is awesome I get to meet so many cool people this way and you know people who are like I would have never picked up this book you know so it's good yeah I think that's incredible I'm I live in Fishtown um I'm definitely going to come by and pick up some books, but I was thinking like, it'd be cool to, since we probably live all, we probably all live in different neighborhoods. Like I've seen in Fishtown, a lot of little, like almost like free libraries outside of people's houses. So it could be cool to just start kind of putting books in those free libraries in our different neighborhoods. Yeah. It could get like a good mix of people just picking them, picking them up. But I love a couple of those in South Philly too. Yeah, just a cool thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and it's just, it's a it's a different form of protest to to share a book with somebody and to actually begin the, the dialogue with them based on that. And I love the idea of uh, having something that we can pass along or even exchange. Yeah, I love it. I've seen on social media you you're just like outside of the shop passing these books around, and it just it. I'm a book nerd myself, so like, <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's how I learn. That's how I've been learning. Yeah, it's I mean, really, it's really awesome. Amazing. People could have just been like, "Oh, what are you talking about?" You know, what are you doing? <laughs> but instead, people have been like so highly um, supportive and em- embraced it totally. And then, like, just our reading. You know, like people keep making making this point that like, "Oh, people don't read anymore." And I'm just like, one, that's not true. And then two, if it is true, like, guess what? We can provide an opportunity for them to re-engage with their, their, their love of books because, you know, a lot of us fall off after school, right? And we get caught up in work and life and we stop reading as much as we, we want to or wish we could. And then, you know, it, moments like this, you know, reinvigorate that. Because you mentioned the, the, the business model, I just wonder if you're putting some sort of a bookmark or flyer or something inside those books. So. <laughs> yeah, has anybody bought books from us? Yeah, there, there's always a, there's a lot of Harry's bookmarks uh, uh, floating around. And then we also have a Harry's bookshop stamp that goes inside of the book. So I figured if, you know, people begin to pass these books down to their, you know, great grandchildren or something, they kind of have a, a legacy or story that lives on inside of them. That's super cool. Yeah, I think especially in this moment, too, where, like, kids aren't in school, libraries are closed. Um, mm-hmm. That stuff's super important. I know, yeah, um, maybe that's something we'll think about with Blue Soup, too, and um, and reach out about, but... It's, yeah, yeah. I, mean, we've, I mean, some cool stuff has happened, right, where schools have been, like, we've built websites for schools where, you know, people could come on and buy a book through that, their school's website, or, like, we did, like, teacher appreciation with one of the charter schools, where the teachers could pick kind of their own books and we design tote bags with them. And so now they have like their tote bags, like when you come to Harriet's, you get one of, you could get one of their tote bags and it's like, cause it was like co-designed. And so I, I'm into collaboration in this like really interesting way where I think better things come out of it when, you know, it's two heads are better than one, you know. There was a, so the creativity is definitely, the, I, I, I would say, my, my greatest ally. I recently learned about a visual artist, a photographer in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and she took pictures of just people being themselves in, in Philadelphia. And I mean, she had a pretty famous picture, maybe some of you have seen it, of some kids outside playing on mattresses on the sidewalk and managed to capture this one kid completely upside down. He's, mm-hmm. he's done a flip over, over cement. 
and you can tell i mean you can see the poverty in the area you know yeah. that part of philly um but he just him and his friend behind him just looks so happy and it's an amazing photograph but what you're saying reminds me of what she did she turned um a part of the space underneath the highway i think under an overpass and she just took all the pillars and put pictures on each of the four sides of the pillars and had a, a um a community gallery opening every yeah. friday or something and she just had pictures there for people to see for like one to four o'clock and then at four o'clock they could take the pictures with them yeah and I love it, that. It, uh, yeah, and it's so you, you're so back in my day. Out. Back in my day, <laughs> so before all of the bookshop stuff. So I was an, I'm an educator by trade, um, kind of I guess, and facilitator, etc. And one time down in South Philly, a guy let us take over his entire house, and so we did a project with the children on the block called uh, Community, where everyone knows your name. And our project was really literally to see if we can get everyone in the, on the block to know each other's names. And then they, he let the children take over. We took over, we turned his entire house into an art gallery and had like art all throughout his home and all like hanging even on the front of his house. It was so super fun. And then we had all these children like, you know, spilling out of his house. Um, and so, you know, I think that like I keep saying like creativity is our ally. Our protest can be so many things, right? It could be literally a million different things can be our, our form of protest. And so it's like, at the, and that I think is one thing that our opposition has not seen, right? It's just like, well, how do, what, what can we do that they're not already prepared for as opposed to kind of just like the same thing and getting the same result? I love that, thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm really honored to have been here with y'all. I really appreciate the time, you know, sharing with folks and the questions and being able to, you know, give y'all a little insight into Harriet's. A lot of times it's like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, you know, so it's cool to do something a little bit longer. Thank you so much for taking the time. This is awesome. And yeah, um, we will, I'm sure it sounds like many folks are excited. Um, donations are accepted uh, via the Venmo. Books are, would love to be bought, I'm sure, via <laughs> Always. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, thank you just for, you know, giving us uh, some of your time and talking yeah. about the work you've been doing. It's and I figure as writers, if you all are looking for um, a community or thinking about like how, where you want to sell your book or how, you know, I'm down to have those conversations and for us to think creatively about what that might look like, especially considering the current moment. I have a really soft spot in my heart for uh, folks that are putting out their first book at this moment in time, because it's a, you know, it's a totally different moment in time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And yeah, uh, Blue Stoop uh, Wednesdays on the Stoop will be back next week, same time at four o'clock with Maya Arthur, who's here on this call, will be uh -huh. our mm -hmm. exciting facilitator of reality poetry, which I don't know, Maya, is there a new show we're thinking through or all of them? Maybe a little bit all of them, but I'm very curious about like a lot of reality show characters are being fired over racism and like maybe discussing that and like what does it mean to have representation with reality TV maybe and just still thinking about it for sure but yeah I'm excited for next week. Excellent the first reality TV poetry was highly successful and I heard people were had some cool poems afterwards so it's a creative element it's a learning element to being together and yeah we're here every Wednesday four to five until the end of time. I see Janina's put your contact info in there into the chat, it's awesome. And yeah, yeah. thanks for holding the space, you know, bringing people together. It's much appreciated. I know, you know, it's kind of, it's work. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's like a nice structure to the week. That was our hope, so. Mm -hmm. um, good to see all your faces. Uh, stay okay, stay cool if possible. <laughs> and we will see you soon. All right. Peace, y'all. Bye. Thank you.